Corey's been using these uh, large soft baits. This is our 18 inch original series. He's been sword fishing with them for a number of years. Uh, he found out about us from a, what, a, a friend up in the Northeast that yeah, used them for bluefin for tunas. tuna. Yes. And uh, had the idea that they'd make a great daytime sword bait. He originally started out by rigging these with homemade tandem rigs. Uh, they definitely worked, but it takes a lot of effort uh, to put them together, and you have to have some precision to make sure that they're, they're going to run straight exactly. and not spin or anything like that. Um, why don't you go ahead and show us how we did the first generation. Okay. Once you make your double hook rig, make sure it's got your little grooves and kind of measure where you want to go. So obviously it sits in the grooves just right. So what I would do... You've got braided cable on there. Braided the cable, yeah. You could use a little heavier mono if you want, but I just went with cable because just, I don't know, just, I felt it was trying to keep it a little bit stiff inside of it. Mm -hmm. But you can see, I, you always had to fight with it just a little bit. Trying to start the hole. Mm -hmm. yeah. through like that. Try to line these up. Kind of decent. Okay. This is a little easier than the first. It's almost like rigging a ballet here. Kind of slide the hook through. Okay, once you get your hooks in place again, make sure they're all lined up. Straight. Okay, just by without doing anything, that's what it's gonna kinda look like. So then what I would take, this ensures the hook to stay in the spot and also get good hookup ratio. Take this. The first thing I would do is go through the eye of this hook here to the top. To one side. And take the other side. Go on the outside of it and just come kind of same through the top. And what that allows you to do is kind of pull the eye tight inside the thing. A couple little half edges. And you don't want to cinch down too tight because it'll end up ripping the rubber. So you just kind of do a soft one, a little bit tighter, and then really tight. Now hold that spot there. Trim that. Like so. And obviously this is a time consuming, time consuming. This way to do it, but you know, in the beginning it, this was the only, this is the only way to pioneering do it. the uh, technique. This is what had to be done. That's right. So then you take, slide it back in a groove, and then I go, it's almost like if anybody used to sew mackerels, go over top of the hook and around that. Who's that? Yep. Okay. And you cinch it down. Very tight. Now one thing you did tell me is that once you had these baits all flossed up and, and rigged, they uh, you know durability wise they'd last you 
months. And get, uh, it, a, again, a few a few fish yes. per bait before you had to really do this kind of surgery. Right, and again. and at the time we only found a package of these things, but you can see how it's pretty. You know, well, it's simple once you get the hang of it. But it, the biggest thing is fighting the hook through here, and then I'd do another stitch across here. Actually, this one would be easy too. This is how I used to finish them off. So you make your stitch to hold the eye in. I usually will put another stitch here to hold this tight, and this will keep this from rolling. And then I would take the end, like so, and just wrap it around like this, as tight as I can. Put the muzzle on it. Put in the muzzle. That way they can't rip it off the hook. Okay. And kind of just kind of wiggle the hooks around, make sure you sit and slide it. And they'll sit right in there. You just trim that. And you know, like again, you leave the eye out just a little bit so you can put your mono through that, whatever pound test you want. And it's ready to go. Give a little action there. 